beautiful. Good morning, beautiful people. This is me testing the sound. Which is apparently working. Do you know what? I'm wearing a sleeveless, not even because it's warm. Well, actually because I just came back from the gym and I haven't showered yet. But also because I'm trying to convince myself that it is summer. Funny thing is, it is actually sunny every five minutes, but it's also with rain. So I've also seen about 64 rainbows this morning. Before I shower and mange mange, coffee. I always drink a hot one before I go to the gym, which I know doesn't really make sense because I always talk about how drinking coffee makes me sleepy, but then I have it and go to the gym. Kind of works out well because I already have too much energy to train too hard and then not notice it till afterwards. But that actually serves me well because I feel like it brings me back to a baseline of someone that just has way too much energy than someone that has way too much energy that they can't actually sit still even to film this intro. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I always make a hot one before I go. When I get back, I always make a cold one. But I make a cold one. I told this in my last video. I don't know how to make a proper cold brew because I don't have a proper coffee machine. So what I do is I just make... Um, instant coffee. Guys, at least it's good instant coffee, okay? That's even a lie, it's Nescafe. But I've already told you that sometimes I'm ratchet and I'm fully owning it, all right? So yeah, in reality, I just make two in the morning, dump one in the fridge, and then call it a nice coffee when it's not that at all. Oatly, all right, number one, you have to buy whole Oatly or what are you doing with your life? What are these lids and who designed them and is it just a big piss take on society? You can't open these lids without the force of two people and then the acceptance that whatever you opened will be splattered all over the ceiling, no matter how high your ceiling is. Cheers. This is officially the fourth summer in a row where I'm cracking open this, I was gonna say famous fruit. I don't think it's famous, because to be honest, I haven't seen it in any other country apart from the UK. And even in the UK, you can only buy it as a speciality item in M&S. So I don't think that that many people have tried it. I know I say this in every single video, but there are windows all over the ceiling. So that is why I'm changing color every five seconds. There is no way to avoid the tropical storm that is above my house right now. Anyway, I first tested this. I first tested this in, I did like a little short. I did that thing of um, testing hybrid fruits um, as a hybrid myself. And I think there was mango flavored grapes. There was this lime melon. I can't remember what else. The thing is I have been buying and consuming these for the last few years and I still can't work out if I like them. They are extremely refreshing. They do taste of lemon. No, they do taste of lime and melon, so it comes through. I think there's just something about it. The concept itself freaks me out a little bit. Cheers. Only thing I don't like about them is that they're too gushy. By gushy, I mean not the definition you'd get if you looked in the Urban Dictionary. They always taste too overripe and smushy. Maybe that's the word I'm going for, smushy rather than gushy. Whereas I prefer my melon to be a bit more crisp, even when it's ripe. I know I'm extremely specific. In terms of training, I've been doing this weird thing where I do one day cardio, one day weights, one day cardio, one day, one day weights. Whereas before I would do a more of a mix of just like hit, boxing, kickboxing, then like long distance cardio, then some strength training. It'd be a bit more just whatever I feel like on the day. And then for me, I put this on my story the other day as well when I was doing a little Q and A on there. Someone was asking, in fact, not someone, probably like 50 people asked and always ask, do I count calories? Do I count macros? 
how do I stay so lean, blah, 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 blah. What, what kind of like goal oriented training am I doing? My honest answer every time is it's never goal orientated, as in with a physical goal. When I was in sport, I just had to be in the best shape for that specific sport. Since then, I can do whatever I want. So for me, if I'm ever in good shape, it's just a bonus. For me, exercise is honestly and only a huge mental and physical release. And you either get that or you don't. It's almost like my daily morning therapy, my, I lock into my thoughts, my creativity, my focus. Um, and if I didn't get the mental benefits that I get, I certainly would not be chasing any kind of physical goal. Anyways, I'm gonna go manger and I will see you for breakfast part two. Who in their right mind orders watermelon, or in, in fact any kind of melon, on online shopping? Let me remind you, watermelons have to be chosen wisely, right? Um, someone whose name begins with J ordered watermelons on online shopping. Of course, in the shop when you're doing online shopping, they're not gonna do the, you know, they're not gonna, they're not gonna do the flick test. They don't even know about the flick test. Do you know what I'm saying? It's the biggest risk of all time. I would just personally never take it. For example, Right, exhibit A. This is a watermelon that they sent via online shopping. Listen to this. And it's quite squishy, right? This is inedible. I know this without even opening it. Don't challenge me, I'm a radiant, okay? We always know. This one, exhibit B, <laughs> is one that I went to the store and got this morning. Now listen to this, listen to the difference, guys. Do you see what I mean? It's not just about the yellow spot. Don't listen to that rule, because actually it doesn't always apply. But it does always have to sound hollow. It does always have to be hard, so it should never be squishy. And it should always feel very heavy. That's when you know you've got a winner. Basically, the moral of the story is don't ever, don't ever, ever trust online shopping with watermelons. Just don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Let's cut into this one. Mm. Beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. All right, this is called my quick backup smoothie because I'm supposed to be somewhere and I'm not there, so I'm late. This needs to be quick. This is a long time favorite of mine. Frozen bananas, which look gross because they've gone brown. Locally grown fresh straws. Greens go in too, not just because I'm in a rush, but I actually always just chuck the greens in. Couple tablespoons hemp seeds, always. Many of you will have seen my uh, ultimate vegan protein powder review. If you haven't, I'll leave it down below. I didn't put this one in the video, I'm not currently working with Vivo Life, but they did send me this. Um, this is their chocolate. Uh, vegan protein from their cheaper range, which is not the Perform one, which I reviewed. And it's very simple, but it's very delicious, has a really nice chocolate flavour. I would put peanut butter in too, but I don't want this to be too heavy, or too peanut buttery. Because I know what I'm going to make for my next meal requires a lot of ravenous energy to eat a lot in one go. Mm. So usually I'd be pissed that this just went all over the board, but it's that good that I'm just feeling happy. I just felt the need to say that I just wanted to prove that I'm actually scooping up the bits that I dropped and I'm eating them too because I don't waste food. I mean I do, but not when it tastes this good. See you in a bit and bring your appetite. Cheers. If you could smell the freshness of this bread. Sometimes it's almost like the smell is better than the taste. Especially with toast in the morning when it's not yours. 
Does anyone get what I mean? This is actually huge. I would say this is for two people, but it's also for one hungry miles. And you know I'm gonna fill this like fuck as well. Back in the day, when I used to live in the States. I speak about Subway as an experience of the States because they just make it differently there. And they also fill things properly. And by properly, I mean they put so much in them that you can almost not even close them and then eat them. But it's better than being stingy. The sub is actually gonna be nothing like anything you would find at Subway. Um, which I know most of you, again, are probably thinking that's a good thing. Uh, but it does start with some firm tofu and some peanut butter. I'm using pip and nut, salty crunchy. It's not just the peanut flavor, you want it to kind of get thick. You want it to get like a thick crunchy crust as well. Of course we need some good creamy avocado. The avocados have actually been shit here recently. Um, but let's pray. Hummus. This is aubergine pesto. <laughs> You're thinking, what? Eggplant. Eggplant. And I, this was one of my favorite ones from back in the day, because it's always been vegan. Just a little bit of this gives a massive bang of flavor. Greens, of course. <laughs> you can see the back bit is like frozen, because it was at the back of my fridge. Big tomatoes. I'm not usually a fan of big tomatoes. You know I love my little cherry ones, just because extra flavor. But in this kind of sandwich, whatever you want to call it, submarine of a meal, um, you want these ones thinly cut. And of course, some fresh basil, some sharp white onion. Right, so the way I do this, I know a lot of you are going to tell me that I'm wasting food. But you can also shut up because, number one, I'm not wasting it. I'll make it into croutons. Basically, I cut out a lot of the doughy bit in the middle and then use the outer shell as kind of like a crust for all the inner goodness, so you can stuff even more in there. A good sandwich, I'm sorry, it doesn't need that much stodge, right? It needs a good crust, a good shell, and then tons of good fillings. Layer of pesto on the bottom. You can also use green or red, actually, red pepper pesto, or sun-dried tomato pesto it goes really well with the peanut butter peanut butter tofu. Look at these beautifully crispy tofu fillets, whatever you want to call them. Mustn't forget, almost did, hummus goes on the other side of the sandwich. I always think of avocado, avocado, as something that just nourishes the skin, makes it glow from the inside out. Fresh basil. I was gonna go with regular tortilla chips, but it has to be salt and vinegar for me, it just has to be, right? So. I'm actually going for salt and vinegar pop chips. I don't know if this is a weird thing to do. Mmm. I feel like it's more of a British thing than a USA thing to put your crisps, chips, sorry, in your sandwiches. That's what I'm talking about. If you could see <laughs> how big this is. Okay, you can't with this camera compared to my arm, but this crunch you're about to hear is almost as satisfying as when you have your back cracked or you crack someone else's or you crack your neck. Beautiful. That is the most delicious sandwich I've ever made.
just in the mood for more sweet things after my mahoosive savoury feast. Jill was in London today, I think I mentioned earlier, and she brought me back these delicious raw treats. Where are they, where are they from? Rolala. Rolala. Yeah. I don't know how you were saying Rolala. Rolala. What is this? Raw walnut brownie. Raw walnut brownie. And they use all whole food ingredients as well, I believe. This is a Snickers cookie. It tastes like a granola bar. I'm a bit underwhelmed, but it's nice. Mm. That looks fudgy. That's what I'm talking about. Insanely gooey. It's like glued my mouth together, but like in the best way possible.